guys, welcome to my little paintbrush. I am Miss Sarah and today we're going to be painting this farm truck with the watermelon and American flag. This reminds me of home. I'm really excited to paint this with you. Remember as we are creating together to be kind to yourself, it's a process, right? And we're going to be doing this together step by step. You can pause it, go back, just be patient as you're learning, okay? All right, let's get started. I'm going to be using three brushes today. I have a large flat, a detail, and a medium flat. If you have um, a medium round, that works too. Either way, we can, we can roll with what we got, right? So let's start first with our large flat. I'm gonna get it wet here in water. Acrylic paint does really well with lots of water. So don't be afraid to add water to your paint. I'm going to add a little bit to mine. I have all my color colors laid out here on my palette, on my plate. I like to do this so I can see them and get to them easily. I always put some white with each color because all my, <laughs> my paintings have white mixed with it. It makes it shiny and a lot more attractive and it goes on easier. So let's start with our background color. It's gonna be a light turquoise, so I mixed a lot of white with it. You can adjust this to whatever shade you'd like. Just add a little more turquoise for it to be darker and a little more white to make it lighter, right? So you can adjust this however you'd like. I wanted mine pretty light. I like those streaks in my painting too, so if you notice, I didn't really mix it, I just kind of patted it. So I have different shades of turquoise and white in my paint. I'm gonna go fairly quickly. I'm just gonna put it on there. Um, your, your truck is going to be all the way up against the edge of your canvas. I have a little more space here because my canvas is bigger, but that's okay. Go ahead and paint right off your canvas and go around the edges as well. If you notice, I'm not being too picky about touching my truck here because my paint will go right over it. I'm not too worried, but I'm gonna do my best to slow down as I go around my truck so as not to get too much paint inside there. Just makes it a little easier later on. Okay, but we're just gonna follow our truck all the way up, brushing that paint in, leaving those strokes alone if you like them. And go all the way around. We'll come back and fix all the little details later. So don't stress it too much. Okay, put those strokes in. Be sure to add water. If you feel like you have a lot of little white pockets showing up on your canvas and it's hard to fill with the acrylic paint, it usually means you just need some water. So add a little water to your brush and you might be amazed at how quickly those fill. Okay, let's go on over to this side. See my flag will also wrap around the top of my canvas here. Um, on this larger one that I'm painting on now, it doesn't, but yours will. So go ahead and reach around the top and paint the top here of your canvas. Okay, we go around here. Well, my brush tends to dry out quickly, so I keep going back to my water jar and adding a little more water to my brush so that it floats around this a lot faster. Okay, we can go around. If you can do this without picking up your brush, then your paint consistency is just right. Kind of tricky to do, it takes some practice. All right, don't forget to go all the way down to the bottom of your canvas and paint the bottom part as well underneath. Sometimes we forget to pick up our canvas and paint that area, so you wanna be sure to do that. Okay, if you want little white streaks in your painting, you can always go back and brush in these white strokes by adding just a little bit of white to the corner of your brush like this. Okay, so then when you brush it in, it just leaves those white streaks. So that's how we get them and we love them. It fills in any negative space and makes it kind of fun. I'm just gonna quickly add those in. 
there we go. Okay, the next step is just to paint the inside of our window. Because it's the same color as our background, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. You can add a little more white to your paint, which is what I'm doing. I wanted the window a little lighter. So I'm adding more white to my paint here to make it lighter. But if you wanna just go right into it, make it the exact same color, that's fine too. I just wanted a little bit of contrast there. And I'm gonna add a little bit of the darker turquoise to the corner of my brush and just brush around. We call this floating the inside of the window so it stands out. Okay, I'm gonna do it over here. We have a little corner right under the flag. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this little, little area too. Once again, I'll put a tiny little dot of my darker turquoise on the corner of my brush and float the edge. That's a matter of preference. It's not required or anything. It's just to help it stand out a little bit if you want. Okay, if you notice, I just put it right there on the corner of my brush. All right, so we're done with that. Let's go ahead and rinse our brush out really well. Good work. I'm gonna clean it very well so that my colors don't mix. I really want my colors to be rich. So I'm gonna rinse that well. Make sure it's clean. And now we're gonna go ahead and paint the watermelons, okay? Now our watermelon, I'm gonna use a medium flat brush for these so that I have a little more control of my space. So our watermelons are a light green. I'm gonna mix some white with my green here just to lighten it up, okay? If you can see that, I'm just trying to brighten my green up. Go ahead and paint that in. The reason we're doing all this before we paint our truck is so that if we go into our truck a little bit here on the bottom, it's not a problem because we haven't painted it yet. We can paint right over it, right? Sometimes we slip up and we accidentally paint inside the truck and that's not a big deal if we paint them first. So let's go ahead and paint these all the way around. Trying to keep our brush going in the direction of your watermelon, okay? So if you're painting around watermelon, you want to make sure that your brush is going in circle motions rather than up and down. That way all the grains on your watermelon go that direction. Okay, now we have one watermelon here that's open right, to show the red. So I'm trying not to get my green into that area. I wanna leave it alone. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna paint just the vine of this watermelon here. And you can make it as thick as you want. I'm gonna use the toe of my brush while painting this so it's not too big. If you're wondering what the toe of your brush is, that's, that's the tippy point of your brush, okay? as if it's standing on its tippy toes. So you don't have to switch brushes and you still get the same kind of strokes in your paintings without switching it up too much. You can just use the toe of your brush to do that. Okay. We have a little bit showing right here. So I'm just gonna put that in as well. My watermelon, okay. Now while that is still wet, I'm going to float the edges of my watermelon by putting some green just on the corner of my brush. See that? I just drug my brush, I didn't rinse it or anything. I just drug it right through the dark green that isn't mixed with white. If you notice, now as I go around facing the green on the outside edge of the watermelon, you're gonna get a darker shade around the edge which is what we want. I just wanna shade it so it really stands out. And then you can kind of brush off the remaining into the center. I just shade all the edges, just like that. Once you get the hang of floating, you'll really love it. It's a great way to get the edges of your paintings without using a detail brush. It just makes it easier once you get it. So something to practice. All right, I'm gonna go all the way around there against the flag. Okay. Now we're also gonna do it here on the stem. 
I just want to paint the outside corner of my rind here. Okay, see that? So I just did the outside edge and it makes the inside look lighter. So it looks like you have two shades going there. Perfect, okay, and we'll just let that dry for just a minute. Okay, I'm wiping off my brush. There we go. Now I'm just going to get the dark on the very tippy point of my flat brush, okay? I rinsed it out so I just have the dark. I'm going to go ahead and put the inside of my watermelon vine in by using the tippy point of my brush, okay? And you're just going to brush it all the way around, kind of uneven, just like you would see, you know, the outside of a watermelon here. And if you notice, I don't do a straight line down. I'm trying to curve my lines a little bit so that the watermelon looks round. Okay, so you just have the dark green. I'm gonna go all the way around, just kind of zigzagging your brush there. That way it's uneven and really adds to the fun details of your watermelon. We're also gonna do the one over here trying to curve my brush a little bit as I go and not too worried about whether it's even or not. That's the beauty of it. Okay, let's curve it out. There we go. We have one more just little one up here in the corner. So you want to add that in. And then I'm going to outline the edge here of this one, just so it really stands out for us. The thing with green is you've got to kind of layer it a little bit to get the effect that you want, because it's a thinner color. Okay, very cool. Let's rinse our brush, let that dry. Let's let it dry for a second and let's go ahead now and paint our truck. I'm not going to switch brushes yet because I want to do the smaller areas of my truck first. So I have my blue and white. I'm going to mix a lot of white with my blue because I want a lighter truck. If you would like a darker truck, that's perfectly okay. All you have to do is add more blue to it. Okay, so you can kind of decide how dark or light you want this truck to be. I'm going to go ahead and put it in here. And once again, as I mixed my paint, I didn't mix it completely, right? I was sure to just kind of tap it. That way I have different swirls in my paint of white and blue. And then it just kind of adds its own little highlights as I go. Now be careful around your watermelons there. If they are still wet, you don't want to hit them and spread green all over your truck. So just go nice and easy there. Okay, there we go. Let's do this side and see, I'm gonna use the toe of my brush here just so I can fill in the smaller area a little easier. Go ahead and paint this area. Being very careful around those watermelons. All right, we're gonna fill that in all the way down. Perfect. All right, now let's go ahead and do the mirror. I'm just gonna go around the outside edge because I'm putting the, the um, mirror part in the middle. So I'm not too worried about getting that just right, but your mirror is gonna go all the way off your canvas almost, right? It goes right up to the edge. Mine has quite a bit more space. There we go, I'm just gonna fill that in. Okay, nice. Okay, now that that's done, let's go ahead and put the inside of our flag in because it is the same color as our truck. We're just gonna put some shade into it here in a minute, which will change things slightly. There we go. All the way across, just make sure we fill that in. All right. 
Okay, so let's switch brushes now. I'm gonna switch to my larger brush just to do the rest of the truck. It's a lot easier for me to fill in this space quickly with the larger brush. If you wanna keep using the smaller one, if you have a smaller flat, that's, that works great. You can just go ahead and keep using it. I just like to fill space a little bit more quickly. I'm going right over my lines if you notice because I can still see them. If you're worried about losing those lines, then you can go around each one carefully. I can see mine just fine, so I'm not too worried. Just depends on how many layers of paint you put over it. If you're keeping it pretty thin, you shouldn't have a problem. Okay. Go ahead and go all the way down to the bumper here. I did get some blue in my bumper. I'm not too worried about it because gray covers everything. So if you're wondering about that. Okay, now that that is done, I'm gonna show you how to float really quick while my paint is still dry. So I have my large flat here. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of blue on the corner, just like that, of my brush. And we're gonna go ahead and just float the edges of our truck. Mine is pretty dark here because I wanted you to be able to see it really well as we go. Okay, if you notice, I'm trying not to pick up my brush as I float around. You want to try and keep that brush flat as you go and just blend it in. There we go, all the way around. Okay, this is where you'll start to see this truck and all the different angles and squares. I'm gonna float the edges to help it pop. There you go. Now just keep practicing this floating. You can keep going around it as long as your paint is still wet. Once your paint starts to dry, really hard to keep that floating going unless and so if you run into that problem if you feel like your paint has really dried up and it's hard to float add some water to your brush the trick is to keep your brush um, damp as you float okay we're gonna go right around the edges here keep it floating all the way around And I just go over and over it until it's exactly the way I want. Okay, so we have that edge done. We're gonna go around the wheel, the tire wheel here, all the way around. Just remember, wherever you float, it will add that detail to your painting. That really gives it a lot of personality. It makes it less flat. So have fun with it and just go ahead and let that brush float wherever you're feeling it. Okay, I'm gonna put some on this side as well. It's right along the edge there. If you come in like that, like I did, right over your painting, it's okay. Just go right over it like that. No big deal. Okay, we're gonna go right around the wheel here. Just let the edge of your brush follow the outside where you're floating, okay? And if you notice, I'm trying not to pick it up, right? Now another option, if you don't love floating and it's really frustrating you, you can use your detail brush and just go right ahead and outline it. It is okay to do that too. It looks great. Okay, awesome. All right, now that we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and do this area as well. Now if you, 
um, are nervous about using a bigger brush to do this area, you can switch back to your smaller one. That's okay. Just depends on how much you feel in control of that brush. Floating the edges. There we go. I'm gonna go up the other side. Just letting that darker edge leave a little bit of shading. Anytime you float around there, it's just going to add a little more detail to your painting. And go ahead and do this side as well. Right up against the flag, coming down the other side. Okay. We're going to go around the mirror with that darker. So, like I said, if you don't want to float this part, you don't have to. You can just use your detail brush to do it. The idea is to just get that darker shade outlined around your painting. Okay. There it is. All right, so we've got to just do our flag now. We want to make sure um, we get that blue. I didn't, I didn't float that edge. You just want to make sure you do that too. All the way around. Okay. Okay, my brush is drying out. I added a little more water to it. Now let's go ahead and do our flag. So the flag, we're going to float the edges as well, all the way around. I wanted it to be a little darker on the inside and get lighter towards the outside. So I added more blue on the inside of my flag there. Brush it in, kind of let your brush go all the way around there. There we go. Now let's rinse our brush out. Good work, guys. Looking awesome. Make sure that brush is super clean. Let's go ahead and finish up our flag. So I'm going to get my medium flat and we're going to put some red on it. Let's add a little bit of white to our red right here. So anytime you add just a little bit of white, it goes on better on our canvas. Okay, your, your little flag here is going to go right off the top of your canvas. Mine doesn't. So once again, just remember that you can go ahead and take your brush right off if you want to. I want my flag red to be darker than my watermelon red. So keep that in mind as you're mixing your white in there. You do want to try and keep it more red than your watermelon. Our watermelon will be a little more pink. The reason why is I wanted the flag to really stand out next to the watermelon. So I'm going to do each of these lines without picking up my brush, if possible. So you want to try and make sure you have enough water paint on your brush to get a good stroke. So you follow it up with the ease there. Okay, this one comes right under the blue just to make it fun. Make it look like that flag is waving. If you go into your blue, you can wipe it off quickly with either a napkin, your finger, like I do sometimes, okay, or you can paint it again once it dries. We get questions a lot about how to fix a little tiny mistake. Our best friend is a napkin with some water. Acrylics will wipe off pretty easily if they're still wet. 
So our last red stripe here, all the way up. Not too worried about going in the pole because it's black, right? Okay, keeping that stripe flowing, blowing in the breeze. Look at that edge. There we go. Looks good. Kate, while my red is wet, I'm going to put a little bit of black on the corner. Here's an extra detail that you don't have to do, but it's fun if you want to. Okay. I just put a little bit of black here on the very, very corner of my camp, my brush. Okay. Tiny bit of black. And all you're going to do is follow the edge, just like we floated the truck. You're gonna float any edge of your flag you want. Okay, it gives it that kind of rustic look about it that we love. You don't have to be too perfect about it. You can let those strokes kind of go where they want. It adds just a little bit of detail to your to your flag and helps it stand out. Go all the way along the edges here. You notice if you keep just a tiny bit on that brush, those strokes won't be too overwhelming because we want to keep our flag red. We don't want it to turn blue okay? or black. We're using black. So just go nice and easy with that black. Go along the bottom of this one. If you feel like it's getting too overwhelmed with black, stop and rinse your brush. Okay. All right, I'm going to leave some little black strokes in there. That's okay to do. Perfect. All right, let's rinse that brush and leave the flag alone for a minute. Let's go to our watermelon. Now our watermelon is going to be pink, so I'm going to add quite a bit more white to my red here. Okay, if you notice, I'm adding a lot of white now to my red. We're going to just add that in. And you'll see that it's more pink than red. That way it stands out against the flag. Or the flag, I should say, stands out against the watermelon, right? Because that's our goal. We really wanted it to stand out. Let's go ahead and put that in there. Go all the way around. I added more red to my brush just for the edges to make it a little darker if you want to. So you have those little strokes, okay? Now while we have this red on our brush, let's go ahead and do our tail lights on our truck, okay? So we don't have to switch brushes. I just have that light pink color and I'm gonna put a little bit of white on the corner of my brush. Just a little bit of white. Figure out where you want those tail lights to go. I just pretty much put it right in the middle, right? So I'll do this one first. I like to place my brush down and spin it in a circle without picking it up. And that gives me that smooth circle, okay? Try and go straight across here. Do the same thing. I'm gonna try not to pick up my brush. Oh. If you do, you can go right back over it. Try not to pick it up and then you'll see that tail light, okay? There we go. Very cool, let's rinse our brush. Good work, guys. Looks awesome. Let's go back to our flag real quick here. We're gonna put the white in now. Your flag should be dry. If it is, you can go ahead and add the white to the inside of your flag. 
and I'm going to show you how to add those quick little strokes of gray to your flag just make it look like it's waving you can also fix anything that's bugging you if you accidentally painted into your line on your flag or anything like that you can just take that white and go right back over it no big deal okay so now that I've added a little white before it dries I'm gonna put a little bit of black on the very corner of my brush okay and this black I'm just gonna add some streaks in my flag here right gives it that look like it's waving kind of fun can add it anywhere you're feeling. It's different every time I do it because I never know where my brush is gonna land. But the idea is to just get those gray streaks. Okay, now let's rinse our brush a little bit, get some water on it. We're gonna go ahead and do the tailgate here. I'm gonna add some white to a little bit of black, just a touch of black. I want it nice and gray. Okay, let's get a nice gray color here. Go ahead and put in our tailgate back and forth straight across nice and gray if you want it a little darker just add black but be warned black will take over so you want to take it easy with black just add a little bit at a time I don't want to go into my truck and take over my blue with this gray. I want to take it easy. So if you have to slow down, you can to get that straight line. Wrap it around. Go straight across here. There we go. Okay, let that dry a second. Rinse your brush and let's put our mirrors in real quick. All you have to do is grab your background color if you still have it there. All right, and you're just going to put your windows or mirrors, not windows, your mirrors in following the outline of your mirror. Just make it smaller on the inside. All right. Okay, got that one. So we can come over here to this side. Try not to block the camera while I'm doing this. So you can see. Add it to the inside there. All right, rinse your brush. All right, guys, we're almost to the end here. I'm going to now add the black to my tires. So rinse your brush. I'm using the same medium brush, but you want to switch to a bigger one you can we're just gonna fill in the tire now right here you can wrap your canvas make it kind of cool you can bring those tires all the way around the bottom of your canvas we like doing that for fun add it to this one trick is to keep your brush going nice and straight when you're doing lines that can be tricky. Right. Okay, so we have our tires in. Let's go ahead and paint our flagpole here as well. It's black, and then we add some white in a little bit, but the main pole is black. The round top here, going all the way around. We're gonna follow this flag down. Go. If you pick up your brush, you could lose that smooth line. So you wanna try and just go straight down without picking it up. Good work if you did it. That's tricky stuff. All right, guys. 
Nice job. Now I have a little bit of leftover black on my brush. So I'm gonna come right here to the back of my truck. Just kind of brush in this square tailgate with the leftover. I don't want it super dark, but just enough to show that it's there. Okay, good work. We just have some highlighting, outlining to do, and you did it. So the outlining can be a little scary. Be patient with yourself as you're doing this, okay? And be sure to add a lot of water to your brush. That will help as you're doing outlining. You can also just say, I don't wanna do the outlining. And that's perfectly okay too. Now to warm us up with outlining, grab your detail brush, add water to your black, and let's finish our watermelon seeds. This will help you just warm up your wrist. So I'm gonna come over here to my watermelon. It has three little seeds. All right, and just, they look like little teardrops. You just shape them with your detail brush. We have one there. One here in the middle. You can make them big, you can make them small. Okay, and one more over here. There they are. And let's just outline our watermelon now. Okay, we're gonna just go right across the top. Just like that. And if you have enough water on your brush and paint, that you won't have to pick up your brush while going across that. All right, okay, let's go ahead and outline our watermelon. This really helps it stand out. Outline this one as well, all the way around. Now, also on your watermelon, you can just kind of bring a little black into the watermelon if you want, just these little strokes against your green, just so it pops there on canvas and gives it that little bit of detail, just like that, okay. And we're gonna go ahead and do this one as well. I just don't wanna put my hand inside my paint. Oops, here go all the way around. There we go. And the same thing, you can just kind of add a little bit of black here for that little detail wherever you're feeling it. Okay, looking good guys. Just wipe that off. So now let's go ahead and just do some outlining. Okay, now with our truck, I didn't outline every little thing, but let's do our flag first. Just go right around the edge. We do outline a lot of the flag because we want it to stand out. Right off the canvas there, right along the edge of the flag here. You can do a straight line coming down or you can show that it's waving. That's up to you on that one. I've done it both ways. Then right here. Outline the bottom part of that flag. I'm not going to outline all these little lines because we already put that shading on it, but I will do the inside of the blue here. Okay. Just like that. All right, so let's just outline some of the truck anywhere you really want it to pop. You don't have to do all of it. You can make it kind of random. It's up to you. Okay, we come right up the edge here, right around the mirror, this is the top of it. I didn't go all the way around. And I just kind of did the inside here, 
So it stands out okay, right along the top. This as well, I didn't do all of that and I just did the top part and the bottom. And you can go right around the tailgate, just around the bottom or the top, wherever you'd like there. I didn't do the whole thing on that one either. Okay, but I am going to go ahead and do some of the inside of the square there so you can see it really well. Make sure you keep adding water to your paint. Super important. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and finish right along the top. I'm gonna try and go straight across to get that straight line. Down the side. Don't want that to happen. Try and keep your line going straight down. Sometimes our brush veers off. Gotta bring it back. Okay, go right along here. There we go. Let's go ahead and finish off this side. And right along the bottom here. Now outlining is really a matter of preference. I have some artists that love to outline and some that prefer not to. So you can decide what you prefer on that one. All right, looks awesome. Let's go ahead and do up here around the inside first. So you can just follow it around. And then I did a little bit of the outside, not all of it, but just along the top there. And I didn't worry about doing all the side of it. Okay, we're just going to come right up here, show off the mirror a little bit and leave it. Along there. And on the inside of the mirror too, if you'd like to add a little bit there. All right, let's go ahead and finish up the bottom part of your truck. Just about finished. We're gonna go around the tire. I didn't do the whole thing. I just kind of stopped there because it goes right off my canvas. And then I added a little bit around the tailgate or the light here. Not a lot, just enough to kind of help it stand out. There you go. Okay, and you can take what's left on your brush and just kind of brush it in here if you want to, to add some shading. Just remember to be gentle with it because if you add too much, it just takes over. All right, guys, last thing to do is our highlighting. Good work. That detail takes some time. That's why we leave it as an optional thing for our artists if you wanna take the time to do it. Now I'm using the same brush, just put a little bit of white on it. Make sure you rinse that black out really well. We're gonna add that highlighting to our painting. I'm gonna put a little bit in your watermelon, right? Really, really makes things pop when you add that light to it to contrast the dark. Okay, I'll be totally random about it. There we go. And our watermelon. Let's go ahead and add some now around the flag. Got the flag pole there. And we're gonna go right down the side of the pole. Okay. And then you can rub it in like this with your finger or leave that a harsh line. It's up to you. You add a little bit here in our flag. Just try really hard not to touch any of your wet paint that you may have. All right, we're going to add a little bit here to just 
top of our truck along the edge top of this corner as well let's put some right here on the above our lights and along this the edge of our tire wheel just like that put some right here on our bumper again this is up to you it just depends on how much you want put some on each tire just along the outside of our tire like that and right along the edge of our bumper. Put one there. Along the bottom there. Just kind of let my brush tell me where it's going to go here. All right. All right, looks awesome. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit in each mirror. And then we are going to add the dots to our flag as our very last thing. Just flip your brush around, use the back of it to get this white chocolate chip. Get a good chocolate chip there. And then you can add those dots. Okay. I like to use my biggest brush handle for this. It's a matter of preference. If you notice, I'm doing a triangle shape so that it looks like my flag is waving, gets higher in some areas than others. Right there and there. Just kind of keep that pattern going all the way down. All right, guys, nice work. We're the, sign our name, it's the most important part, right? And you can put this wherever you want. I'm going to put it right here on my bumper and sign my name because as artists we are proud of our work, right? There it is. Okay, thank you for painting with me today. Be sure to tag us so we can see your paintings at My Little Paintbrush. We'll see you next time.